Hello, I show right now English version of anonymous Russian telegram channel General SVR, that is in English General of Foreign Intelligence Service of Russian Federation. The name is rather conditional, of course. On October 26th, as you see, current year 2023, General informed again that President Vladimir Putin was being substituted by his double on permanent basis because his health was worsening constantly. Evening that same day he announced urgently that President of Russian Federation Vladimir Putin died, so any attempt to pass off a double as the president after Putin's death has to be considered as a coup, coup d'etat. You can stop the frame and read everything more carefully. Next day, October 27th, related to General SVR telegram channel Dr. Soloviev repeated, the tyrant is dead. But how much can you trust them both? First of all, General SVR. He introduces himself as one of the authors of the telegram channel General SVR, Lieutenant General of the Foreign Intelligence Service, the man you know as Viktor Mikhailovich. Mikhailovich is not surname, but father's name in Russian tradition. He himself was forced to emigrate several years ago, but he suggests that he receives very detailed leaks from several senior officials around Putin, and Putin even must know some of them personally, but they are too influential to be easily dealt with. Of course, this sounds suspicious, but why not, if some of them are amid leadership of some secret services, whereas even an ordinary operative is armed and commands a small personal squad of civil agents, I show them on my own channel here in Vilnius. Here are some earlier posts by General SVR. Could its content has been made up, albeit with errors in Russian punctuation? More than one year ago, on August 2022, 20, Miss Daria Dugina, daughter of the ideologist of Russian fascism Alexander Dugin, was blown up in her car. Initially, her father had to sit beside her, but he got into another car at the last moment and survived. Russian authorities discovered a Ukrainian trace immediately, but in this post by General SVR of August 22 last year, he claims that it was just Alexander Dugin himself, fanatical and primitive mystic who decided to sacrifice his own daughter as a sacred offering for the sake of Putin's military victory in Ukraine. Here it is explained in detail how Secretary of Security Council of Russian Federation Nikolai Patrushev satisfied Dugin's wish by organizing this terrible murder. Likely provided the daughter had been carrying her father in her car, then the car apparently wouldn't have been blown up. Dugin himself wasn't informed neither of details of the assassination nor its timing. For him it was a kind of surprise at the moment it occurred really. This is why, according to this version, his situative despair might be sincere. Nevertheless, he said during morning ceremony, this is the highest price that our orthodox belief and our victory required. On August 24, 2022, General SVR wrote, this event was presented to Putin as an attempt to manipulate him, which he really didn't like. He convened a video conference with top officials, asking each one of them, Do I look like a rabbit? No, everyone answered. So why did you decide that I can be bred? This reproach was addressed first of all to Secretary of Security Council of Russian Federation Nikolai Patrushev on the left. Is it possible that someone composed this phantasmagoric story with all the details, with the sole purpose of harming Patrushev? The relevant question is this, are possible such unbelievably barbarous degenerates as an intellectual leader Alexander Dugin? Unfortunately rather yes, in Russia, nowadays. So I admit that General Sverd may not lie. Now current year 2023. On August 24, General SVR reported that the private airplane, commander of private military company Wagner Evgeny Prigozhin, with the hole his staff was on, not fell as a result of the disaster, but was shot down by the Russian air defense system. 
It was quite expectable even before Prigozhin's mutiny attempt one month earlier, on July 23, although he was permitted to stay free afterwards. But the report ends with a hint – Prigozhin is early to discount. Valery Solovey explained later that Prigozhin was warned by his friends Emmet military command to miss that flight, so he survived, unlike his staff, some another person was buried. Soon after the mutiny attempt, Evgeny Prigozhin announced that he with his men had to fulfill some great task somewhere in the world, very important for Russia. Valery Solovey then said that Prigozhin was hiding in Venezuela and preparing for the victorious revenge in Russia. In the meantime, the news came recently at the beginning of December 2023 that Venezuela is preparing to invade Guyana. So it is quite probable that Prigozhin with his preserved units will play a main part in that adventure, since it is important for Russia. It is unclear whether what General and Soloviev claim about Prigozhin will ever be confirmed. Now this is October 26, Putin's death announcement again. What followed next? October 27th, extremely careful and detailed description of yesterday's event. And then October 30 immediately. This is what the general deleted. Traditional answers to questions October 28, 2023. This is what the general says starting at minute 36.36. То, что власть сейчас нестабильна, и еще раз подчеркиваю, я всегда говорил, если у какого-то оппозиционного лидера, если у какого-то оппозиционного движения есть желание проявить себя, попробовать сместить власть, вы можете с нами, не с нами, как угодно, можете обратиться к нам за помощью, можете не обращаться к нам за помощью, можете действовать самостоятельно. Мы говорим, власть сейчас слаба как никогда. Если вы чувствуете в себе силы, если вы чувствуете в себе возможность ответить, взять на себя, ответить на вопросы людей по, по их безопасности, по ответственности за них, по ответственности за свои действия, за действия тех людей, которых вы будете на что-то агитировать. Если у вас все это есть, действуйте. И действуйте в те сроки и в, те, в тех возможностях, которые вы считаете для себя реальными. Пожалуйста, не сдерживайтесь. Владимир Путин умер. Ждать больше нечего. Хотите прийти к власти и считаете, что для вас это возможно. Мы действуем так, как мы считаем, исходя из своих сил, из своего понимания. Если кто-то считает, потому что нам часто укоряют, что мы, э, дескать, э, откладываем, э, откладываем желание многих начать действовать. Если есть желание начать действовать, милости просим, действуйте. Все, у кого есть желание и возможность действовать оппозиционным, я прежде всего лидером и э, движением, Пожалуйста. Сейчас ситуация позволяет, если вы считаете, что вы придете к власти, сейчас власть слаба, как никогда, как никогда ранее. Власть намного более слаба, чем даже 10 лет назад, чем даже во время Болотной. Власть слаба. Власть в очень шатком положении. Если вы считаете, что возможности у вас есть, и если вы считаете, что вы можете повести людей на какие-то, пожалуйста, делайте только берите на себя ответственность и объясняйте людям, что вы как делаете. И более того, мы поддержим любое, любые движения и, любое, и поддержим и не только словом, но и делом. Давайте. Со своей стороны мы обязательно призовем и обязательно расскажем, как будем действовать и как мы гарантируем нашим тем людям, которые пойдут по нашему призыву, как мы гарантируем свою ответственность перед ними. Так, вопрос в случае использования двойника после смерти Путина. Это же по сути захват власти ОПГ и как ОПГ собирается решать с легитимностью подписания законов, верительных грамот послов, приказов военным самозванного верх главнокомандующего. Вы правы. Я хочу еще раз обратиться ко всем. У власти самозванец. Любые приказы, любые подписи, его это все нелегитимно. Все это ерунда. Это самозванец. Самозванец. Это не президент России Владимир Путин. Президент России Владимир Путин на сегодняшний день находится в 
своей резиденции в морозильной камере. Труп в виде трупа. Резиденция на Валдае. Если у кого-то есть желание посетить резиденцию в Валдай, у кого-то есть возможность. Я думаю, опять обращаюсь к оппозиционным, к разбитным лидерам общественного мнения, которые говорили, что мы там кого-то сдерживаем. Пожалуйста, при посещении резиденции президента Валдай мы с удовольствием укажем, где находится президент и будет возможность удостовериться лично в его смерти. Так, вопрос, сколько времени будет скрывать смерть Путина? Я думаю, что очень недолго. Это практически невозможно и долго скрывать. Nikolai Patrushev, through several channels at once, communicates with the leadership of several countries privy to the situation, issuing guarantees of continuity of course and various promises. I suppose those countries are three – China, Iran and Belarus, and maybe Hungary. Is all this the general's artistic fantasy? November 2, 2023 The proposal was forwarded that the double should officially change his last name, first name and patronymic to Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin, just in case. On November 14th, General reported that it has been done. On November 4th, 2023, Secretary of the Security Council of Russian Federation Nikolai Patrushev delivered a speech at the annual Congress of the Knowledge Society. Many noticed his mournful appearance and the fact that he spoke a lot about the enormous merits of President Putin in the past tense. Only in the second part of his speech did Patrushev mention that Putin is aware of all the problems and is successfully solving them. General SVR explains all this by saying that November 4th was a ninth day after Putin's death on October 26th, when, according to Orthodox tradition, the deceased is commemorated. In the evening of the same day, a memorial banquet for a narrow circle of people was held at Putin's residence. November 14th, 2023. Nikolai Patrushev was informed that Putin's corpse is now being stored incorrectly for proper long-term storage of the deceased, other conditions are necessary. In the coming days special equipment will be delivered to the presidential residence in Valdai, not too far from Moscow. Indeed, several days later, the general published a list of the purchased expensive sophisticated medical equipment. Finally, December 1st, 2023, basic agreements have been reached between the Secretary of the Security Council of Russian Federation Nikolai Patrushev, his entourage and people who were in the immediate circle of the late Russian President Vladimir Putin. Namely, the President's double will represent the ruling regime in the presidential elections on March 17, 2024, after their victory, the double appoints Dmitry Patrushev, the son of Nikolai Patrushev, as Prime Minister. After six months of the new government, Putin's double will announce his resignation, introducing Dmitry Patrushev as his successor. This is what the Putin's double was and still is temporarily needed for, for smooth transit of power. The double has changed his name, surname and patronymic, as it was proposed by someone on November 2. And now he is also Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. Just in case. How political events in Russia would develop after fake Putin as a retiring president recommends Prime Minister Dmitry Patrushev to be elected as his successor? Professor Valery Soloviev predicts, and this prognosis scarcely likely belongs to him only, that fierce struggle between factions will soon begin because their interests are irreconcilable. Nikolai Patrushev plans to nationalize the main industries and to purge state apparatus. A brief armed clash may happen 
Hard times will come. You need to stock up on provision, water and everything you need. The group that I am honored to belong to, says Valery Solovey, will also take the stage and call on the people to support them, so be ready to take to the streets. As a result of our victory, he says, a constituent assembly will be convened and the republic will be reorganized, a new constitution will be adopted, the war in Ukraine will end with a compromise, all propagandists will be punished, the names of all undercover agents will be published. Of course, we in Lithuania are pleased to hear this. Alas, there are no indications at the moment of the deep people would ever be able to take to the streets. Whereas intellectuals and students are suppressed, and besides of this, they have their own political parties and organizations. But what is that support group Solovey refers to? He states that several years ago, influential group of top statesmen invited him to be their public spokesman. He agreed, thankfully. They protect him, although not entirely. Few years ago he spent a couple of weeks in the pre-trial detention center for his attempt to organize movement for changes. Then his son was beaten severely on the street twice and secret services tried to poison his spouse. He claims that despite of people see him often smiling since he is genuine optimist, but in reality his life resembles hell. Patrons try to warn him about the dangers and recommend how to behave. But we know all that only from his own words. Many people among Russian oppositionists, especially political emigrants, are sure that Valery Solovey, that he is an old provocateur from the FSB, seeking to abstract the opposition movement with various fairy tales. Some his features astonish me too. Here is Solovey's report of October 27. The tyrant is dead, already showed by me. But the original post here was like this. That's why I scheduled my online stream for yesterday evening. Yesterday it was October 26th evening when Putin allegedly died. The impression was that Solovey was bragging. Look, I already knew a few days in advance on what day my friends planned to release a fake about Putin's death. Solovey deleted the post soon. But maybe he felt that bragging was inappropriate. Concerning Putin's health, Solovey used to assure that he only transmits doctor's opinions. Or here is Solovey's article Kremlin Volunteers of November 17, 2023. The article proves that a significant part of the Russian oppositionists have reduced the anti-Putin attitude to anti-Russian. According to the author, it is normal to fight against the war and demand the withdrawal of troops from Ukraine. But it is abnormal to rejoice at the deaths of Russian soldiers who were not involved in war crimes, or to demand the defeat of the country or its dismemberment. This position also worsens the situation of Alexei Navalny and Ilya Yashin, who are imprisoned. Oppositionists should think about how with such a position they want to return to Russia and participate in electoral struggle. The article is quite fair from the point of view of from Russian national interests, but it omits important problems. It is written in strictly official language with an accusatory slant and not without demagoguery, so it is possible that it was written not by Soloway, although he certainly approves its content. However, this is how Valery Soloway starts every new video. Moscow speaks and shows, or this is Moscow. So solemnly, Soviet television used to begin live broadcasts of rare, especially important state celebrations. Valery Solovey seems to be speaking here already on behalf of the entire state, and he also reminds by this once more that he and his friends, while staying in Moscow, do have such a moral right, unlike political immigrants, who is interested in this mutual alienation. And this is how he ends his videos. And I will stay with you, as long as I have the strength and capability, until our victory and longer, I hope. And remember, remember firmly that no matter how hard it is now, 
victory will be ours. It certainly will be ours. These such impressive suggestions must inspire people. In the year 2015, Professor Valery Soloviev published the book The Ultimate Weapon – Fundamentals of Psychological Warfare and Media Manipulation. The book was written based on a close course of lectures that he gave at the elite educational institution Moscow State Institute of International Relations under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russian Federation. And he likes to explain that the very public discussion in itself of whether or not Putin is dead helps to delegitimate the regime. Naturally, there is a feeling that professor himself applies the science of manipulation, but is doing it with good intentions. Alas, the Russian people are traditionally indifferent to whether the government is legitimate. Anyway, a moral and responsible politician should never lie to the people, all the more if he wants to be trusted. Moral politics is a social democratic principle, by the way, in my opinion. So far as I know, not a single leader or blogger of Russian political emigration abroad believes that Putin is dead. They simply mock at Valery Soloviev, but they do it out of simple banal envy. Political emigrant, former KGB colonel and former member of state Duma, that is parliament of Russian Federation, Gennady Gutkov, is one of two persons who, in my opinion, have necessary competence to judge policies. He admits that Putin may use doubles, but a huge army of officials who are completely dependent on Putin monitor his every move and each department has its own vertical channels for unofficial leaks. If Putin died, Gutkov says, there definitely would be some kind of leak and Gutkov's numeral friends would have delighted him with this news. He is sure. How I want to ask, if all phone conversations are being recorded. And another former KGB colonel, Sergei Zhirnov, he also admits that Putin may use doubles, but he reminds that the total quantity of service personnel in Putin residences, that is, maids, cleaners, waiters, cooks, Workers, doctors, security, all of them together with their families may reach 7,000. It's hardly possible that if Putin dies, there would be no leakage. Maybe, but let us never forget that all of them are employees of the Federal Service of Guard, who have given the strictest non-disclosure agreement. Only a couple dozens of them may see Putin on almost everyday basis. The source of the leak can be identified and may unofficially face death. Professor Valery Soloviev hints that one day in future the truth will be exposed by someone of those same top officials when all of them will begin a mortal battle with each other, which is inevitable as he asserts. In one of my comments I asked Valery Soloviev the only meaning question. He is a respectable person, social scientist, professor and former lecturer, enjoying great quantity of his former students, colleagues and acquaintances. Does he realize that if it ever turns out that the reports of General SVR about Putin's death, which he reproduces constantly, were irresponsible and politically senseless fabrications, then he risks at the end of his life completely losing his reputation as a respectable person and remaining in a role of a vain clown forever. In one of his subsequent videos, Soloviev unexpectedly said that he would never spread false information that would harm his reputation, because he values it, and he completely trusts his sources of information. This is why I am inclined to rather trust Valery Soloviev than not to trust him.